Hello and welcome to Water Day. Today is the 22nd of August 2022. And given the fact that it's a Monday, the phrase of Monday blues very appropriately applies because there is a lot that has happened in both the papers, the Hindu and the Indian Express. Now, today's video is going to be slightly different because while running through the paper with you, I will also tell you how do you use the live CA tracker and how do you use the conceptual references and the backgrounder links that I have provided for you to understand exactly what is happening uh, within uh, what is called the current affairs for that specific day. So let's begin with the Hindu newspaper. As we can see, there is a lot that has happened in the paper. I have the Delhi edition in front of me. For those of you who read the Hindu on a daily basis, you can take the paper out, sit the paper in front of you and let's go through whatever is important uh, in the paper today. So on page number one, the front page as well as the 10th page, there is a news item that says facing government action, Huai to dial down R&D operations. Now, this is in the backdrop of allegations which have been made against the telecom company, not just by India, but also by several other companies in the world, where they have accused the company of allegedly indulging in spying or other forms of malpractices. As a result of this, the telecom company has faced a severe downturn in their business and this particular telecom company was once considered to have an incredible amount of potential to stand against the other mobile phone manufacturers as we would know. Now this particular editorial, this particular article talks to you about how the company is reducing its presence in India, its efforts in India given the fact that the company is not being included in a variety of initiatives that the telecom sector in the country is currently shaping up into. For example, the 5G trials and so on and so forth. Now comes the more important question. Why and how is this important? And to what extent should we be going into details as far as this particular news is concerned? So, of course, from a science and tech point of view, you should understand the basics of 5G technology. You must understand the applicability of it, given the fact that India is going to officially roll out 5G networks very, very soon. You must understand the length and breadth of it, like a full analysis of what is the 5G technology, how is it different from previous generations, where can it possibly be used, where can it not be used, what are some concerns? Are there going to be additional impacts out of it? Is there an ethical conflict of some sort? And so on and so forth. Now, this particular company per se does not fit into your syllabus. So what does? What you should do is, as you will notice, this is the home page of the website. You will see something called a CA tracker, which is written over here. You simply click on CA Tracker and you will see that the Notion Live template is right before you. Now, the first news is obviously right here. In the conceptual reference itself, I have included an excellently simple link of an article which explains what has gone wrong with the company here. This will explain to you whatever needs to be done in the right amount of detail. Apart from this, the fact that it is argued that it is a Chinese company and therefore there are instances or alleged instances of the Chinese government having a stake or some sort of presence in the company, the activities could therefore be questionable. So after reading the article on page number 1 and page number 10, just read this particular link. Don't make any notes out of it. Don't make any 
specific notings out of it and don't write it down anywhere else you don't need to just this much is enough and at any point of time if this keeps recurring you can always come back to this this is going to be permanently there with you now let's move to the second item on the front page so apart from that if you see there is nothing particularly relevant as such as you can see on the front page where it is whether it is about a lookout notice against eight people in the delhi excise policy case i am being very clear about this you don't need to know what a lookout notice is you don't need to know what the excise policy matter is you don't need to know how is the delhi government involved you don't need to know whether specific people in this issue are involved or not the larger premise is that is this an issue of a political usage of an investment agency to serve a different end or there is a legitimate problem that the investigation agency is trying to figure out now this would therefore come under the larger question of how do we make our investigation agencies more accountable and more autonomous in the first place and you could also use this as an ethics example on using force for the right reasons <clears throat> that's it getting into the specifics of this and the <clears throat> political dialogue that follows is not important at all apart from this on the small columns that you see on the left on the front page you will see something that says meghalaya assam cm hold talks now this is the second round of talks because assam and meghalaya of course have a long standing boundary dispute now if you are somebody who knows what the boundary dispute is great you don't need to worry about it you can simply revise it but if you are somebody who is hearing about the assam meghalaya boundary dispute for the very first time all you have to do is go through the go to the tracker and on the tracker here itself i have enclosed a link of the indian express explained which has magnificently and very clearly explained what the problem is now the question is where and how does this become important as far as the exam is concerned you see as far as paper 2 is concerned you would not be asked very specifically as to what the boundary dispute is you would use the boundary dispute as a context to further strengthen federalism or to emancipate the interests of the northeastern states or a question on whatever has been done so far from a constitutional point of view from a legal standpoint from a welfare standpoint uh, for special provisions that should be made to give the northeastern states a sense of priority and this of course has an internal security implication so in that context also you would use this as a specific context so that is that so in total as long as you know what the basic issue is that is more than enough you don't have to worry about it too much largely because it is still something which is in progress it hasn't been resolved yet now apart from this everything else on page number 1 as far as the hindu is concerned is irrelevant for example whether it is about the saddening news of the daughter of a key advisor to putin in russia dead in a in a car accident which was triggered allegedly uh, by explosives or whether it is about some journalists who have been charged with certain sections for misreporting or misleading the people with their news you don't need to know the kind of laws that were used you don't have to worry about whether this was rightly done or not these are two micro issues then of course towards the latter end a senior congress leader has quit a specific position in the upcoming uh, election responsibility that was allocated to the person and of course another political uh, personality has been charged with a specific crime uh, in rajasthan 
that's it. Uh, none of this particularly seems to be important as far the exam is concerned. And as long as you know these two things, that's more than enough. Now, surprisingly, on page number two today, there is a minor news development which is sort of important. And in the Delhi edition, you will find this which says uh, respond on identification of road accident victims. This news item is on the left hand corner of the second page. Now, what is this in context to? This is in context to the Delhi High Court, which has issued an order wherein it has asked the unique identification authority of India, the organization who is responsible for collating and keeping a database of the Aadhaars that have been given across the country and to assist them uh, or to assist the authorities in cases of identification of people who have suffered because of road accidents. Now what is sort of important here is the authentication process which has been mentioned and they have mentioned a specific organization called the Central Identities Data Repository, right? Now there are several news in the, in the Hindu today in and around Aadhaar but for completely different reasons and we will keep coming back to them. So what do you need to do is in the prelims, when the Aadhaar judgment had come out, they had asked a question, which of the following is compulsory and not compulsory for Aadhaar? In the mains exam, once the privacy Aadhaar judgment had come out, the question was, what are the implications of the judgment? Now, at the outset, what you must understand is that the Puttu Swami judgment is actually a judgment with two dimensions. The first dimension, of course, is that the court has recognized uh, Aadhaar as a privacy, uh, uh, privacy as a fundamental right under Article 21 implicitly. So the first dimension is in India, right to privacy is now a fundamental right under Article 21. Now, because of this, there are several other repercussions. Some of those are discussed in the paper today. The second is, it was the Aadhaar Act which was challenged by Mr. Puttu Swami, who is a retired judge. So the court had upheld a few provisions, the court had watered down a few provisions, the court had declared a few provisions as null and void. So that is where the second dimension sort of comes in, which is also being quoted in the paper today for a completely different context. And I'm going to come to that eventually. But what we are here talking about is, the possible use of Aadhaar to identify victims of road accidents or to identify people involved in road accidents so that adequate measures can be taken, which is a possible use case of Aadhaar. So as a UPSC aspirant, you must understand what is the authentication procedure. You don't need to know the entire technical details of it. But you must understand broadly how does that function. And for those reasons itself, you will find that in the, no in the Notion Tracker, I have enclosed a specific link directly from Aadhaar's website, which explains to you what the identification and the authentication process is, and also explains to you what this central data repository is. So just read through it once and bookmark it that's more than enough. This has to be attached to your Article 21 studies when you are doing privacy and Aadhaar as a subtopic under Article 21. So that is that which is important from page number 2 in the Hindu. The rest of the items on page number 2 are not particularly relevant as far as the exam is concerned. However, if I could just take a few minutes of your time and draw your attention to a specific article which says sextortion, how tech savvy criminals are blackmailing victims online. Now, this is largely about uh, people reaching out to people and saying that they're going to uh, assist them with some of their physical needs through a technological medium and in return they will have to pay a certain sum of money. 
Now I'm not getting into the legality of it or whether it is right or wrong. Now this particular item also relates to you as aspirants because over the last few months I have also received a several amount of complaints or a several amount of distress emails from students who have also been sort of caught up in this and they have unnecessarily been blackmailed for a certain sum of money. Now, if you are somebody uh, who belongs to this specific group, please let me know and we'll help you out legally, we'll help you out and we'll make sure that you don't have to pay a single penny out of it and that's something that is the least that we can do. Now, apart from that, there's nothing on page number two that you have to particularly be worried about. You can simply forget about it and then move on. Similarly, on page number three itself, which is the states page, again you see largely political news, you largely see political developments, you largely see statements that have been made by some political leaders, which can completely be left out, you don't have to worry too much about it. Then you move to page number four, which is again an extension of the states page, which is again a few political statements that have been made, a few statements which have been made by the near and dear ones of somebody who was um, caught up, of course, in an accident or an event. There is nothing much that has really caught the attention at the regional level on the fourth page and you don't have to worry about it and move on to the fifth page directly. E on the fifth page, now there is a particular article that might interest you because it has some polity relevance, but it is not going to ever be asked in the exam. And that is 50% management quota rule in the Christian Medical College in, well, in, in Bellore is absolute as said so by the Supreme Court. Now the issue here is a lot of you would think this needs to be done in a lot of detail because reservation is a fairly important topic. But you must understand, the UPSC asks a very defined set of questions as far as reservation is concerned. Question number one, they would always ask with respect to, have we been able to reduce atrocities against caste? And what more can we do to empower lower castes in India? That's the first set. The second set of questions that they would ask are that, are the institutions responsible to, to be the apex agencies to uplift caste issues in the country? Are they doing a good job or not? For example, the National Commission for Scheduled Castes, the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes and the National Commission for Backward Classes. So per se, very specific developments in reservation, whether it is a local reservation policy or whether it is an issue about EWS or whether it is about the Supreme Court uh, delivering a judgment on identification of backward classes. While they seem to have a lot of weight in the papers, it is extremely unlikely that the UPSC is going to ask you a direct question on it. So don't worry about it. This a topic like this will seem tempting enough, but you have to resist it because this is not particularly important. Apart from that, on page number five, you will also see another news item, which might again seem important to you. And you may want to read it in a fair amount of detail, but you don't need to. It is essentially about how in Assam, lower government post exams had to be conducted because of which internet services or mobile services had to be temporarily shut down, which therefore brings the larger question of the legitimacy of internet shutdowns into question, which again is a larger part of Article 21. Now, whenever you study Article 21, you will be studying about a judgment called the Anuradha Bhaseen judgment, wherein the court has said you, the right to access internet is a fundamental right, but can also be withdrawn if there are legitimate reasons. And the right to access internet does not mean that if a person does not have internet, it is the government's responsibility to provide them with internet. So that is all that you need to know. This just adds as a context to that and nothing else. So this is page number five. Apart from this, everything else in the left column is also not important and can be ignored. 
Then from page number 5, we move to page number 6. There are editorials and I am happy to report that all of the four editorials that have been mentioned here should completely be left out for the reasons I'm going to tell you now. The first editorial that says Bihar and the evolution of Mandal politics. This is essentially about what are going to be the larger political ideological battles in the upcoming elections in Bihar in the years to come or in the electoral politics or the developments of Bihar. There is still a long way to go. But also at the same time, what impact does it have and what is the, the rationale behind those political ideologies? This is not in your syllabus and therefore can effectively be ignored. But if you are somebody who is interested in Bihar politics or politics in general, you are more than happy and you are more than welcome to read it. But from a civil services relevance point of view, this can be completely ignored. The editorial below that is on Kansas, which is essentially nothing to do with India. It does not have any impact on India whatsoever in a larger sense of it all and therefore can be ignored. The other two editorials that we are referring to are now, so, so when I am when referring to Kansas, this also is in the context of referendums, right, which is essentially a tool of direct democracy. Now, in your UPSC, you should know what a referendum is, how is it different from a plebiscite. In case you don't know this, you can always watch the free polity lectures that I have uploaded on the website and on my telegram and other channels. And you should know, should India have a dedicated referendum law? A referendum law does not necessarily have to just do with territory. It could also be the people trying to vote on massively important issues directly. So those are the two things you should know out of referendum. First, the difference between a referendum and a plebiscite. And second, does India require a dedicated referendum law? That's the part which is important for the means. This editorial per se does not have to be done. At the most becomes context in a larger answer on referendums. Now, the other two editorials on your left on the sixth page, Spirited Battle, which is again about the whole Delhi versus AAP versus CBI versus excise policy, ignore it entirely. Though the editorial tries to say that whatever the case might be, there, there could still be some ground to cover, there could be some legitimate reason. And the editorial behind that is essentially, of course, uh, about the world trying to support the country of Somalia because of law and order and terror issues that emanate out of it. Again, too distant for a UPSC aspirant, so don't worry too much about it. Now comes page number 7. Now, there is a lot of Aadhaar, privacy, a lot of law which is mentioned on page number 7 which is why this needs to be done with a fair amount of detail. So, <clears throat> out of the three editorials which are mentioned on page number 7, you only and only have to do two editorials. One, what next on data protection? What this editorial tries to do is that as you might be aware, that after a fairly long tenure of the data protection bill being in circulation, the government has finally decided to withdraw the data protection bill and has been withdrawn and is now looking at a more comprehensive and a more holistic data, digital, privacy kind of a law encompassing a lot more than what the original data protection bill wanted to do, which essentially wanted to identify who's a data principal, who's a data fiduciary, what are the kind of protections, data localization, uh, a data protection authority, instances of complaints being received, and so on and so forth. But that bill is history. Now, if a bill has been withdrawn, <coughs> do you need to know the details of the bill? Not at all. If the bill has been withdrawn, it is no longer a question of policy. Now, India right now has what is, is, is what is called a policy vacuum, which means up until now, we had some steps that were being taken 
at a national level to achieve some form of a framework on data privacy and so on and so forth. But now we are looking at starting from ground zero. So this editorial largely tells you what are the things that we should consider while we are looking at a new data protection law. This must be bookmarked. This must be read with Article 21 data and privacy and therefore becomes extremely important for your means exam. This is not important for your pre. Then comes the second editorial which is on the right, which is a fairly legal editorial, making bail impossible. It's of course written by Pratik Chadda, who is an advocate on record of the Supreme Court and a very illustrious <coughs> lawyer in himself. Now, what this article tries to do here is a little complex in nature. All of you broadly know that the Supreme Court delivered a judgment wherein it said that the provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act must be strictly enforced and it is the Money Laundering Act which gives the powers to the Enforcement Directorate to take a few steps which are necessary to enforce the law better. As a result of this, it is often understood or if it is often argued that the ED might be a little more transgressive in nature, it might be a little abusive in nature. But to everybody else's surprise, the Supreme Court said that no, it is necessary, it is therefore for greater good, that we need to have a tougher law. It might seem pervasive, but the larger evil of money laundering requires a tougher law and therefore for utilitarian purposes, it makes sense. What this editorial specifically refers to is that the Enforcement Directorate and the powers that it has been given and the general issues of bail, if somebody has been charged with a few sections of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, it is very difficult for a person to get bail and there are certain principles of criminal justice which are reversed like they are in other cases such as presumption of innocence versus presumption of guilt. Now this therefore restricts a person to adequately file for a release from jail if you have been wrongly accused of. So when the bail provisions of a law become tough, I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it. When the bail provisions of a law become tough, when it is tough to get bail because of a criminal law, it could be used against a citizen, it could be misused against a citizen. And therefore, a citizen would find it very difficult to apply for a, a writ of habeas corpus or some relief from a court so that the court is able to acknowledge that the citizen has been wrongly accused or there is some foul play at large. Now, back in the day, during the emergency, one of India's most critically evaluated judgments is the ADM Jabalpur versus Sivakan Shukla case, wherein the Supreme Court, in a very surprising manner, restricted the scope of Article 21 in the larger application of an emergency. In case you don't know this, I have I've enclosed a few things here, I'll tell you how, right? So that is that. Now, the Puttu Swami judgment, the right to privacy judgment of 2017, overruled the ADM Jabalpur judgment and said, the dignity and the freedom and the privacy of a person is fundamental and should not be subject to any foul play. Now, for those of you who have been studying this for a while, you are familiar with these judgments. But for a lot of you, this may come across as complete Greek to you. So what you require is a brief of what the PMLA case is, a brief of why uh, the Putuswami judgment becomes important, a brief of what the ADM Jabalpur case was. All the other minor judgments which are mentioned here, the 2017 case and the 19 case, are irrelevant, don't have to be done from a UPSC's perspective, right? So, how do we know what are we talking about? 
why do we need to know what we are talking about we go back to our <clears throat> our live tracker and when we see our live tracker you will see a very small paper like thing which has been circled here this means i have added something here which has some additional information okay some additional information so we go here and you will see i have given you a very small background of what the drug trafficking issue was why the law was brought into place how does the ed get those powers who had filed the case why is the case important what did the petitioners argue the people who filed the challenges what did the government argue what was the decision of the court what was the final concluding statement then a specific judgment on a specific amount of uh, a specific bill then the adm jabalpur case which has been mentioned here which is the landmark emergency rights sort of a case this should be done in your polity static but i have just given this to you as a matter of context so that you know this is what we are referring to so when you are reading this just make sure you open this part and you are able to go through it now apart from that you don't have anything else on page number 7 to bother you much with then you would move to page number 8 and on page number 8 you will see text and context now in the text and context section you will see an article and explainer which says delhi police's use of facial recognition technology so let us first hold our horses and understand the extent to which this can be asked what the basic technical technological details of facial recognition important for the pre for the means possible applications of it and the possible concerns of it now what is the context of this there is a there is an independent civic society organization called the internet freedom foundation who had filed an rti with the delhi police asking them that a you are using facial technology how accurate is it and by using facial technology have you been able to really find out who has committed a crime and the responses have been slightly questionable so in this explainer a you should definitely read the gist and then you should read what is facial recognition what is how is the use of it harmful and these become the two most important points of this editor, of this of this explainer which is important and this needs to be done that is it now apart from that on page number 8 itself you will see something to do with nepal's citizenship law now because nepal is a neighborhood country we might particularly be interested in what the citizenship law is some of you might be aware nepal after repeated and multiple iterations was finally able to come to a constitution and the constitution therefore divided nepal into smaller states the formation of the states also has been criticized largely by india because the way the communities have been populated in those states but apart from this the nepali constitution also gave uh, sort of space for the creation of a nepali citizenship law wherein women in nepal are discriminated against on the on the basis of who they marry and therefore their children might have a differentiated citizenship or they might have a change of citizenship while this is complex and while this is a the issue you can use this in ethics as a conflict but i do not see a dedicated question or even a context of this to be used in your core gs 1 to 3 papers so if you want to read it once or twice for your sake and understand it great but otherwise don't bother too much about it because india has not particularly said anything with respect to this recently when the nepali constitution was formulated a few years ago india was one of the very few countries in the world to have objected to this particular provision and also the way the states were created because it was against the interests of the madhishi communities or the janjati communities which shared close cultural links with border states such as up and bihar but anyways don't worry about it now comes page number 9 
page number nine is about the open sea tale of the future of NFTs, which are non fungible tokens. Now, the open sea tale per se is not important, but basics of what NFTs are, how do they exist, why are they traded, who owns them, what are the challenges with them, what is the future of it. Yes, you should know from a prelims perspective and the possible applications of this could be used in the mains. So that is why it is important. But specific portions such as is OpenSea failing or can people trust OpenSea? Just read it once because it's largely about something which exists in the digital in the digital space. So there is a limited accountability for it. So that is that. Now, apart from this, <clears throat> I do not see anything else per se important in the Hindu newspaper at all. We move to page number 10, which is an extension of the news which has already been covered so far. So there isn't a lot that is happening. On page number 11, <coughs> which is again national news, there you will see something which says forcible Aadhaar, voter Aadhaar ID linking, right? Forcible voter Aadhaar ID linking. Now, if you go to the uh, current affairs tracker, that we've built here, you'll understand I've kept this here also as a position and you'll understand why. See, this makes you understand, one, is that the election commission is voluntarily asking people for their Aadhaar data, which could be linked to their electoral data, which is largely looked at from a violation of privacy perspective. Now, as UPSC aspirants, what do you need to know? Will you get a question that says, is it okay? Is there an ethic? Is there examine linking of Aadhaar cards with electoral cards? No, but you should know the background of it. The right to privacy judgment. So for that, I have given you a very small write up so that you understand what it is that we are referring to. So if you go to the link here and you will see a very small uh, timeline of what the Aadhaar bill has been and what specific provisions are mandatory, not mandatory, what has the Supreme Court struck down and what it hasn't. So this will give you enough of a context to do things in the right manner. So that is slightly important for those of you who are knowing this for the first time. For those of you who generally have an idea about Aadhaar and privacy in 2017, you don't have to bother too much about it. And that is that. Everything else is either work in progress or a political statement on page number 11. Page number 12, if you would move on to it, again has nothing particularly important. There is a statement which has been made by Ashima Goyal, uh, who of course is a member of the Monetary Policy Committee, who says that freebies are actually not free and therefore come at a trade-off, come at a cost and political parties, whoever they are in power, should always inform the people of the costs behind the freebies. There's no such thing called a free uh, a free meal when it comes to freebies. So that, apart from this statements made by the external affairs minister, he's currently on a, a three nation tour in South America. Wait for things to finish, wait for things to, to wind up. If there's something important, it will be reported in the papers and we'll take care of it accordingly. Apart from that, uh, you don't have to worry about anything else which is on page number uh, 12. There's something about the lumpy skin disease, but it is too micro of an issue for you to take cognizance of. So that is that. The business section is private in nature and therefore could be avoided. Then you will see page number 14, which is foreign affairs. And on page number 14, which is foreign affairs, again, we do not find specifically anything important. There is a statement which is made by the Prime Minister of Singapore that the, that the, that the Singaporean government will no longer have laws criminalizing homosexuality, which is a welcome step, which is a welcome step. And you could possibly use this in a context on homosexuality in your polity or vulnerable sections or, my, or sexual minorities answers. But that's pretty much it. Apart from that, 16, uh, 15 and 16 are sports sections, which don't contain anything of relevance as of today. So that is that. So your Hindu gets covered in this particular method today. 
Now for those of you who are going to be reading the Indian Express, uh, between the Hindu and the Indian Express, it is the Assam Meghalaya news and the child of a Russian political advisor, which is largely in common, otherwise most things aren't. So the news in Indian Express uh, actually begins from page number three. So I call page number three, page number one, the same thing. You will see the first item which says a mystery dwarfing disease hits the paddy crop in Punjab and Haryana. Now this might ring a few alarm bells for you. This is important. This is continued on page number four as well. So three and four, one after the other. So you should know the different types of crops, paddy, rice, wheat, etc, etc. At the same time, you should know the impact of the green revolution, the impact of, of additional scientific artificial techniques, what has caused for this and what can we do to solve it. Now, this is something which you would be studying very theoretically on the impact of using scientific techniques on agricultural practices and its, its effects, its positives, its negatives. This becomes a larger context. But don't sit and do a research on where is paddy grown, why is it grown in Punjab, Haryana, what is the specific technical detail. You don't have to worry about it right now. Then comes the next important piece of news on the front page of the Indian Express. The number of women scientists have gone up. Uh, the head of the CSIR, who is the first ever woman head of the CSIR, has said so in a statement. Though, of course, the general percentage of women in sciences all leadership positions in sciences still remain to be fairly low. So this must be read in context of gender empowerment, women empowerment and therefore becomes important. You could use this as a very good anecdote or an introduction to your answers on gender. Apart from that, you will also see uh, another article in the Indian Express which says 19 states cross pre-COVID gross state domestic products level in financial year 2022. Kerala and UP are behind while Andhra Pradesh is doing very, very well and Pondicherry is of course the most behind. Now, <clears throat> don't get too worried about it right now. You are in the middle of the first few phases of your preparation for 2023. If you're writing the means here this time, then this again could be used as impacts of COVID recovery. So wait for this. This is just a statistical piece of information. Read it once and then just move on. You don't have to sit and make a note out of it. You don't need to calculate how gross state domestic products are calculated. You don't need to know the methodology behind it. You don't have to worry about the ranking per se right now. I will anyways extract this and put it in the rankings database that I maintain on the website itself and you don't have to worry about it. Apart from that, on page number one, there is nothing else. You will see some developments on the Bilkis Pano case, which is going to go on for a few more days, from what I can tell. The political news that was also common to the Hindu about a Congress leader who's resigned. Uh, statements made by the Delhi minister on CBI actions against him. Apart from that, the daughter of, a, of an aide in Russia who's been killed. Those are your standard news which can be completely left off. Page number four is an extension of the front page. You could then move to page number five, which again has political developments, some criminal developments, some very, very hard, uh, very, very, um, you could say difficult criminal in, uh, sort of developments where an eight year old was raped, murdered and the body was thrown in Yamuna. And the person who did that has been, a uh, butcher has been held for the same. So. These are fairly devastating pieces of items and we feel bad and, and we feel very difficult. But <clears throat> from an exam point of view, I don't particularly see this to be important. Then on page number six, again, you have local news, some issues happening in Noida here or there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you will find a little bit of amusement when you will hear about how an air traffic controller has been tested. <coughs> For psychoactive substances, there have been new rules which have been developed in January 2022 where, where aircraft staff and air, air traffic control staff have to periodically be tested for certain substances. So you might find a little amusement here, but this is actually very serious. There are lives of people who are at risk. 
Then on page number 7, mostly political in nature, completely be left out, there's nothing that you have to worry about. Page number 8, again entirely political in nature, entirely argumentative in nature. Page number 9, you will see a few statements which have been made by a former member of the NHRC who was responsible uh, for assisting uh, the Bilkis Banu case for representation in the Supreme Court where the NHRC had assisted legally and otherwise to, to further the cause and to get justice to the woman. So this also gives you an insight into the kind of work that NHRC does, which is essentially one of their core functions, which you will study as standard and static in polity. You don't have to particularly worry about anything else, which sort of gets covered uh, here. Minor developments such as home guards in Maharashtra to get 50 lakhs of insurance cover, which is a good practice, a good uh, governance initiative, a, a good institutional in initiative to boost the morale of the people who serve in uniforms um, and all of that. Then on page number 10, there are a few explained sections out of which only one is really important, which is what are cloudburst incidents and why are they rising across India? So this becomes important in the context of rains in the UK. Now for those of you who are reading about this for the first time or experiencing this, this is an almost yearly affair, which also then brings us to the larger issue of is the state of the northern states in India a largely doing of the nature or is it something that you and I as human beings have also played a role in shaping up. So this must definitely be read uh, in the entirety of it and you should bookmark it, copy this as a part of climate change and, and ecological happenings and keep it at that. You can get prelims questions from here. You also can get mains questions from here. So please do them. This is important. The one article that you should read cover to cover. Then you could leave the rest of the articles in the explained section. You might be tempted to read the US jobs recession paradox and understand because it the, the editorial says, the article says its impact on emerging economies and India is an emerging economy, but don't worry too much about it. Uh, it is too technical in nature, it is too hypothetical and it's too speculative in nature, though makes some extremely valid points. It is not to be done as far as the exam is concerned. Then comes page number 11, which again uh, has one common news about internet shutdowns which were made in Assam for government exams, the larger internet shutdowns issue, Anura Anuradha Basin's case, and that's the theory part of it. This just becomes the context, but otherwise you don't find anything important on page number 11. Now we come to page number 12. The current crisis, which is essentially about while po political parties are debating as to whether electricity is a freebie and should be given, the larger state of power in the country, the larger uh, analysis of the power sector and the distribution companies is a problem. Now this becomes important. Now that is why in your live notion sheet that you can access here simply by, by clicking, clicking on the CA tracker you will find that I've enclosed an article uh, here itself of the ORF, which gives you a very good analysis in the context of the national electricity policy of 2021, which explains to you the larger issues of electricity in the country and how can we solve them and across the various stakeholders. So that becomes important. None of the other editorials on page number 12, whether it is about the dexterity of Nitish Kumar, which is political, whether another extremely compelling editorial about how justice failed Bilkis Banu in the recent developments or challenges with the common university entrance test are too micro in nature. But when we move to page number 30, there are actually two editorials that become important and the last two things that have to be done from the Indian Express today. So the first, of course, is for Amrit Kal in agriculture. What this editorial really talks to you about is that we need to make certain groundbreaking, path-breaking reforms in agriculture innovatively. We have to use technology. We have to keep technology which suits us. We need to provide for alternate sources of energy to sustain agriculture, which is why solar plays a very, very strong role in agricultural sustenance and sort of feasibility. So this must be read in entirety and this editorial must be saved because whenever you read agriculture, 
you will find points from here that can be clubbed into the different points of agriculture, whether it's about production, storage, technology, infrastructure, any, any element of it, you will see this to be important. And then the last editorial, which is too many balls in court, which is largely in the context of Supreme Court uh, giving directions of certain compositions of committees, which are not taken very well. For example, the FIFA has banned India from football because of the committee composition. And of course, uh, the larger issue of, let us say, the Indian Olympic Association, whose affairs have been taken over by another committee, which was then put a status quo when the Delhi High Court case went on appeal to the Supreme Court. But the larger issue of sport regulators and how the composition of these regulators should have a good balance of players as well as administrators becomes a larger policy issue. In fact, I'm identifying it as an issue for Water Week. So I'm going to prepare on it. I'm going to give you a comprehensive lecture on the sports sector of the country from a legislative point of view, from a welfare point of view, from an economics point of view, from a policy point of view, and so on and so forth. So, so that is that. Apart from that, page number 14, which has international news, again, is either circumstantial, event-based or political, so therefore doesn't have to be done. Uh, there are, of course, issues in Somalia with terror outfits claiming a lot of lives, and we send out our condolences to the bereaved families, but from a UPSC civil services point of view, you don't have to worry too much about it. Another thing which was common with the Hindu also was the, the Prime Minister of Singapore making a statement that there aren't going to be discriminatory laws on homosexuality anymore, which could be used as a context in a larger question on homosexuality in India. Apart from that, on page number 15 is an, an interview with the new Vice Chancellor of uh, the Jawaharlal Nehru University. So don't worry about it. Uh, don't read it at all. Not needed. Page number 16. Uh, this is about clarifications given by the Finance Ministry. This is also in the Hindu about whether there are going to be charges on making UPI payments. The Finance Ministry has clarified that there won't be any charges. UPI has been a game changer. I would recommend that there is this YouTube YouTube channel called Think School. So type on YouTube Think School UPI and you will get an understanding as to how revolutionary India's UPI product is, India's rupee product is, and we are global leaders in fintech because of uh, UPI and, and rupee. So that is that. Apart from that, there is a report of the government where we see massive delays in government projects. And of course, road transport and highways are the ones where most of it gets, gets accounted for. Work in progress, uh, two months before the mains, the news will remain the same. So don't worry about it. The rest is sports and can be ignored. So that is that. As far as today's Water Day is concerned, I will issue another video on Water Week Rewind completing the news for the last week and giving you the best articles for each of the important news that has come out in the last week. And then, of course, I'll be releasing my Crash Courses videos today also. So thank you. Have a great day and see you around. Bye-bye.